So yesterday, Bonnie mentioned that she pitched a new idea for the roller coaster. What was that idea? We have some more fun, please, on the stage lights. Wow. Oh. Uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, someone asked on Jimmy Beasley ride for me, I got back for it, so uh, I don't know what that would be. Uh, and then I was talking to Thierry later on in the evening when we kind of brainstorm ideas of what that could be. But um, I guess later on in the movie, it's going to be a little bit more of a movie so maybe something a bit more of a movie to do. Or something with her. If we can figure it out, you guys can figure it out. Yeah. Let's go right there. Could you tell us a little bit about uh, you and your character's experiences riding the Hogwarts Express and how you think that might compare to fans who have the opportunity to ride the real Hogwarts Express for themselves here at Universal and Um, I think it was really cool for us because we were able to film on the, uh, on the actual uh, on the ride itself. So we ride the Hogwarts Express in London and you see the difference. Uh, and, uh, so it just takes us back to the point of it at King's Cross Station. But we only rode it 10 minutes outside the station and came back in here. So to be able to do the full journey is a great experience. I'm sure that the fans get involved with it as well. It's the exact same as we experience. And he's just throwing it inside the mercy of world of money. Other questions? Richard. I can spray this. Sorry? I can see how we can do Go ahead. Oh, thanks. Uh, my question is for uh, the twins here. Um, I work for a business paper, so I want you to challenge the character, or challenge your characters, and tell me, tell me uh, what trait do you think they did that makes a good business owners? I think they saw a gap in the market. Holding <laughs> <laughs> on it. And, um, I, I guess that you know, what was really cool is that when we were playing the characters, it, we first started to get to know their Side and then you got the fire when they're taking bets for the trial of the tournament. And then the, uh, the next, next episode, they're uh, starting their, you know, testing out the products and then come after Prince, they've, they've got their own store on, on the Diagon Alley, like, which is right here outside now. And what's quite cool is that that was one of our favourite sets out of the whole series. And so when the guys said here that they're going to put it here, we were, we were very excited, and then I got very, very excited when the first thing you pretty much see as soon as you walk in is a 15 foot version of myself. So. Uh, I have a question for Matthew and for Ron. I'd love to hear you guys talk about the transition from the film world to what, what's been created here. So, Matthew, just tell a little bit about what it's like to be surrounded by this sports team. Well, it's ridiculous to be, to be quite frank. I mean, it's, it's, it's so impressive. Um, when we were filming, um, at least the studios, the sets were brilliant, they were, they were fantastic, but it was very uh, uncommon for us to have a complete set. Um, there had been uh, half a set, so you got the cameras in, all the crew. Whereas what you've done here, you've created a completely immersive 3D environment, and it's all in solid stone. And it's just, you, you just can't get this anywhere else. It, you know, from, from the moment you're here, um, so the moment you leave, the illusions never, never shatter, and with the exception of today, you know, there's never any electricity cables flying around, there's never, you can't see any of the rides once you're in Diagon you're just in this world taking this journey. And um, I think if we if we'd have filmed the movie here, we'd all have a lot better. Because it's just, it's just you, you can't help but get pulled get into the world. Um, yeah, I agree with Matt that it would have been a lot easier to do the movies when not to use your imagination. Um, yeah, I, I just love that it's it's totally for the fans because there are so many things that like for real fans who know like, all the details, all the trivia. Because there, there's so many details that if you have read the books, you would just walk by them and wouldn't even know. Um, and it's just really cool to walk around and you see little details like there's no point to like, like oh there's where Harry stayed in before his third year, and, and then I was thinking about oh yeah he wandered up to Florida and Florida Street every day. And it's like, walk through the books in this land and um, and I just love how you can do a full 360 turn and you don't see any roller coasters, anything else, it's just it's the Hogwarts, you know, the skyline, the 
chimneys. And, um, I, I really, I, I don't even, I didn't even need to go on the grounds. I just like to kind of wander around and pretend it was a witch for a few hours. Honey, what was the moment, please, when you when you're walking around in the land that you sort of went, was there sort of one moment that you'll recall for a long time forward that was sort of like, wow, I'm um, curious to know if there's something that sort of stood out. British, 
and like even if it's reflected in the clothes they wear, this is not the clothes the clothes are wearing is not for Florida. So costume for one. and yeah, I'm the person so excited for them to explore the creatures. Like Fantastic Beast was so it was such an amazing book. It, it, all the creatures I don't know. I mean it was better than Pokemon, come on. Um, <laughs> so I, I yeah, I just can't wait to see what, what else she'll come up with. Um, and to meet Ralph Ralph's manner, because uh, Luna has a connection there. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you all for your time this morning. We really appreciate it. Have a great time. Thank you.